All right, if we can call this meeting to order. I'd like to ask you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First item up on the agenda is uh, con consider and act upon the minutes of the regular meeting of May 2nd. May I have a motion to accept? So moved. I'll second. Uh, any changes or discussion of the minutes? All right, we're ready to vote? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's done. Uh, next up, uh, to consider and act upon the minutes of the combined Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance public hearing uh, from March 20th, 2012. May I have a motion to accept? I move for discussion. Okay, I'll second. Any discussion? I move that we postpone these to our next regularly scheduled meeting. Selectman Walsh had changes that he wanted to propose. All right, I'll minutes. second that. Okay. Any discussion on the motion to postpone? No. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Next up, uh, Board of Selectmen, recognition of the 2012 Fairfield Red Cross Community Heroes. Um, we have a number of heroes that received recognition in our community. Um, if I might, just as a preface, it, this is something that's near and dear to my heart. I've served uh, as a CPR instructor, as a board member, and chair of our local Red Cross chapter. So it's great to see the Red Cross recognizing Fairfield citizens for everything they do uh, in this case, not only help keep our, uh, or help make our community special, but in many respects to help keep it special by keeping some of our neighbors alive. Um, quickly, let me just read one example for Brian uh, Caffarelli, yes. Paige Herman, <coughs> and Eric Barthel. Yes. Three neighbors worked together to save four young swimmers who were swept away by a swift moving tide near Penfield Reef in Fairfield. Fairfield Beach Road resident Paige Herman was on her per par porch, porch last July when she heard screams coming from the water and knew something was wrong. Investigating, she saw four young children struggling in the water of Penfield Reef. Herman ran down to the beach to where her neighbor, Eric Barthel, was swimming with his family. According to an account in the Fairfield Citizen, Herman, yelled, Herman said, I yelled, those kids need help to Eric who was big and strong. Barthel ran through the water along the reef for about 100 feet before he could swim out to the struggling children. Barthel told the citizen, I panicked when I saw so many little kids. They were starting to lose it. They were tired. Barthel reached the first swimmer, who was 12 years old, and got her oriented to the reef and encouraged her to swim toward it. She had been unable to see it in a rapidly rising tide. He then reached the next swimmer and moved her toward her parents, who had come into the water after hearing the commotion. He then swam out to a 13-year-old girl struggling to stay afloat while holding a younger boy of six or seven. Barthel took the boy, who said he could not swim at all, and freed up the girl to reach land. He told the citizen she was a strong swimmer and deserves lots of credit. Barthel was getting tired from exertion. Just then, neighbor Brian Caffarelli entered the area in his kayak. He reached Barthel and the boy and helped Barthel get the boy into his boat. He then gave Barthel his life vest to help him reach shore. Herman said she was honored by the recognition. Barthel told the Fairfield Citizen uh, the rescue was a team effort, noting that Herman's alert to him saved precious time. He also said Caffarelli's timely arrival helped when he was growing tired in the deepening water. Paige Herman's definition of a hero, someone who reacts to an emergency and does the right thing. Congratulations to all three of you. On another front, uh, two other heroes being honored, Bob Tretz and Officer Scott Sudora. Teamwork is a better way to get things done, and the fact that two award categories are being recognized together for their work in saving a life shows just how true that, that is. When Bob Trez, owner of the Penfield service station, saw his friend collapse in a chair, he knew exactly what he had to do. Bob got the victim safely to the floor, called 911, and began administering CPR. 
Fairfield police officer Scott Sador was on patrol in a neighbor, neighboring area when he heard the dispatch call go out regarding the incident. Though he was not the patrol officer in that area, he knew he was likely closer to the location than the area patrol car. He volunteered to take the call, knowing as, a Fair, as Fairfield Police Chief Gary McNamara said in his nomination, that seconds can make a difference in saving a life. Officer Sador proceeded to the Penfield Service Center where he found Bob Trez working on the stricken man. Officer Sador took over care of the man until emergency medical personnel arrived and administered shock with an automated external defibrillator, an AED. The patient has since made a full recovery. Rapid access to CPR and AED are the keys to increasing the odds of survival and sudden cardiac arrest. One fortunate man is alive today because his friend was trained and knew what to do, and because a police officer made the decision to work outside the regular boundaries in order to save a life. Thank you to both Bob Trent and Officer Sador. Uh, let's see. Is uh, Officer Scott Sador here? No, but I'll be receiving the award for you. Captain Zabin, thank you. Is, is Bob Trez here? Is uh, Brian Seffarelli here? Yeah. If you'd come forward. Paige Herman, I can see, is here. And is Eric Barthel here? No, Eric's not. Uh, Jim, Kristen, would you like to come out and help me uh, present our certificates to our American Red Cross heroes? All right, Eric's not here, correct? Right. And we've got uh, Bob Trez is not here. Thank you. Brian Caporelli? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Page, I see you all the time. So congratulations and thank you for keeping a close eye on things. Thank you. There you go. Thank you, Paige. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Right. And Captain Zabin, thank you again on behalf of I'll your police this. officers. Thank you. I'll receive this on behalf of Scott, who's not able to head another command on the other one today. Thank you. I'll pass it along. Thanks. I'll pass it along. Thank you. When we talk about being a community and helping each other out, I don't think there's a better example of this than, than saving a life and, and making a difference. And, and uh, thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the whole town, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We just went through the minutes we postponed. All right, um, next up, for information only, we've had a uh, few resignations. Uh, some of these are paperwork kind of catching up, so we're going through a batch at this time. Uh, from the Conservation Commission, Philip uh, De Janeiro uh, resigned. From the Fairfield Bicycle and Pedestrian Plan Advisory Committee, Alyssa Israel, uh, Lisa Jokin, all right, uh, and Jason Gladstone. Uh, from the Fairfield Housing Authority, Noreen Zelensky. Uh, from the Land Acquisition Committee, uh, Letitia Ferguson. From the Penfield Reef Lighthouse Preservation Committee, Jennifer Carpenter, uh, Linda C Crawley, Steve Elworthy, Paige Herman, David Peck, and William Sapone. Um, next item up are Board of Selectmen appointments. To the Land Acquisition Commission, uh, Jean Harrison of 21 Oldfield Road, uh, term is uh, November of 2011 through November 2015. Uh, is it okay to take these together? Sure. Uh, Stuart Manley, 145 Autumn Ridge Road, uh, term also November 11 through um, November 2015, and Wendy Radovic uh, from 74 Popora Road. November 11 through uh, November uh, November 15. May I have a motion to accept the nomination? So moved. A second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All right. Any comments from the public? All right. Uh, back to the board. Are we ready to vote? Yes. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Are Gene Stewart or Wendy here? <coughs> All right. All right. Wendy and Stewart. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for your volunteering and congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Now go find some land. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, that is the challenge. <laughs> All right, next up, uh, first selectman appointments for information only. Uh, Daphne Dixon to the Clean Energy Task Force uh, and uh, on the Conservation Commission. Uh, Letitia Ferguson of 542 Mountain Laurel Road as an alternate on the Conservation Commission. Um, is Daphne here? All right, is Tish here? All right, next up, Board of Selectmen appointments. Uh, first <coughs> item up is the Ethics Commission. This requires a, a unanimous vote of the Board of Selectmen. Um, do we want to take these together or separate them out? I'd like separate. to take them separate. Okay. Uh, first up is Thomas Drew, Democrat, 151 Blue Ridge Road, term of November 11 through November 13. I have a motion to accept. So I move. A second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Kristen? Yes, I uh, would like to thank Mr. Drew for his willingness to serve uh, the, at our last meeting. Also talked about this commission, and I, I didn't at that time uh, add the significance of this commission, which I hope is not a busy one, um, as they meet as needed. But I very much appreciate Mr. Drew's uh, service and his experience working in this, at the state level with the issues of ethics and I'm grateful that he's willing to serve. I think he'll be a wonderful addition to the commission. All right. Mr. Walsh? Uh, I'd like to echo Kristen's comments. I've had the pleasure of serving with Tom on uh, the RTM and, um, and had a great experience with him in serving on the Legislation Administration Committee. Uh, he's a fellow attorney. Uh, he has served um, with distinction uh, when he served in the State House. And I think he's be a great addition um, from all the things that he's done. Um, and I think he can give a great perspective on not only from the town side, but also his work with the state. Um, so I think uh, he'd be a great addition, and I, I look forward to him serving. And I thank you for to, willing to give the time, Tom. Yep, and, and I'll echo all of that. I think that when we look at Tom's background, uh, he served in the RTM. He served the, the, uh, at the state. Uh, he's been somebody that's been involved in the town and the community. And I think that anybody who's worked with Tom uh, would echo two thoughts. One is that he's thoughtful, uh, and one that his words are always measured and considerate. Uh, and I think that's somebody that would serve well in, in this capacity. So uh, I also uh, am thrilled that Tom would consider being nominated. Um, any other comments, or may I go to public comment? Any comments from the public? All right, seeing none, we're back to the board. Any final comments here? We're ready to vote? Yes. yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Tom, congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Next up, uh, for appointment to the Ethics Commission, uh, David Schmidt, Republican, 61 Partridge Lane, term November 11 through November 13. I have a motion to accept. Discussion purposes. Okay, a second? I'll second for discussion purposes. All right. Um, any discussion? He is, was unable to make it today, correct? Uh, is Mr. Schmidt here? Correct. Oh. I think we should postpone this for till the very next meeting. Um, it's it's too big of a commission, being the ethics commission for the town of Fairfield, <coughs> have someone come before the public. Um, I have no, no find nothing. He looks like he's going to be a great candidate, but I just think for those purposes, I think that um, you know, yeah. For example, I think if if Mr. Drew, where we've all worked with him and he's been around our community for so long, it, it, maybe I could have gotten past that. But I've never worked with Mr. Schmidt nor know him. And I just think for the public um, to have the opportunity, you know, God forbid there's somebody who knew something or whatever, but, and I, I'm certainly not saying there is, because I, I plan based on what I'm seeing, supporting them. But I just think that we should just put it off for two weeks. I don't think it'll slow anything down. From what I understand, there's no current business before that commission. Right. So I, I just think for, you know, dot the I's and cross the T's, we should just put his uh, thing off until he can come before the board of selectmen. Any comments? I, I concur. I think he looks like a great candidate. I have had a chance to talk with him, and he's very enthusiastic about the work 
of ethics, mm -hmm. and um, but I also agree. I think that we should all have a chance to speak with him. So I would support if you're making. A yeah, motion I'm going to make. I'll, I'll make a motion to postpone this till the next board of selectmen meeting. Is his nomination to the next board of selectmen? Right. There's second. I'm happy to second. All right. As part of the discussion on that, I support the motion. Yeah. Um, I I do know uh, Mr. Schmidt. He's both a professor of ethics at Fairfield U. Uh, and also running the business and ethics uh, class that the Rotary Club is sponsoring uh, at the Fairfield U Bookstore, and I've had a chance to participate in, in a couple of those sessions. So I think that this is one of the ways that we get to partake of Fairfield University and the resources they bring to bear. Somebody like Professor Schmidt would not necessarily be in our community were it not for Fairfield University. Uh, though I do agree with the comment that, that the board should have them here in the public show, so I don't, uh, but I. Uh, do want to reflect on the fact that uh, I, I view Professor Schmidt as a real asset to our community in doing that. Um, any other comments before we vote? No, I any look forward to coming before us. Yeah. Any comments from the public? Ready to vote? Yes. yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 So that item is postponed. Uh, next up, Fairfield Housing Authority, Maureen Delaney of 15 Pine Tree Lane, 5D term. Uh, November 9 through November 14. Uh, she is a tenant representative to replace the uh, tenant representative who just design, uh, resigned as part of that board. May I have a motion to accept? It's moved. A second. Second. Uh, is any discussion? Uh, is she here? Uh, <coughs> Maureen? Is Maureen here? There we are. <coughs> any comments for Maureen, or questions for Maureen? Just comment. Um, this I, I'm grateful that you're willing to serve and I think it's uh, certainly an area that we have had some increased discussion on and look forward to your involvement and, and adding to that conversation mm -hmm. thank you I look forward to it. Okay. Mr. Walsh um, Maureen how long have you been a tenant there um, actually I've been a tenant for six months okay but I live in Fairfield, and I just great. returned from Florida. Oh. I, th I think it's great that there's a representative to, to be able to air um, any of the issues that may the tenants may have. So uh, I'm really happy you're willing to serve in that capacity and, and represent the tenants there. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I'd echo that. I think the Fairfield Housing Authority performs a very valuable resource for the town, uh, addresses an important need in our community, and, and uh, I'm thrilled that they have the wisdom to get residents involved and, and part of their leadership team uh, you know, in business, you talk about staying close to the customer. I think this is a great way to do that. And, and uh, so thank you for being willing to serve and help your neighbors as well as the town in doing that. Thank you. Uh, place like home. <laughs> uh, further comments here? No. Any comments from the public? Back to the board. Are we ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, next up uh, to the Flood and Erosion Control Board, Kevin Coles, uh, Democrat, 1573 Fairfield Beach Road from the term of November 10 through November 15. Um, may I have a motion to accept? So moved. A second. Second. All right. Any comments? Mr. Coles here? I am. Very good. Um, I'm, I'm happy to speak, Mr. Coles, although I have not had a chance to talk with you directly, just looking at your answers to the questions and your resume and experience. I'm grateful that you're willing to serve. And I thought your answer relating to the fact that this issue is going to continue to be one of importance to us as a community is very insightful, and I'm glad that you're stepping forward. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Walsh? Uh, I'd also like to echo Kristen's thoughts um, as well as my, I, I do know Kevin um, both professionally and uh, personally and um, I thought Kevin served as an assistant town attorney during the Metsopolis administration, did a phenomenal job with the litigation matters. He also is a member, uh, lives down there at the beach and knows very well the issues that come and uh, before uh, the town in regards to that I think will be an excellent representative to be able to serve the town in that capacity. So thanks for your time Kevin, I appreciate it. I agree. I've had uh, I've enjoyed our conversation uh, in uh, talking about this board. I think flood and erosion control certainly, as we've learned in the last year, is something that does come up from time to time, and certainly is an ongoing challenge down there. And I think it's through volunteers uh, like Mr. Cole's uh, helping his neighbors out um, that make a difference here and, and allow us to uh, make sure we make progress against that, uh, along with the help of our DPW, 
department mm -hmm. and uh, state aid from time to time. So thank you again. Any comments from the public? Back to the board. Are we ready to vote? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Kevin, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, uh, next up, the Land Acquisition Committee uh, Commission, uh, Stanley Garrell, Democrat, 42 Eaton Court, term from uh, 11, uh, November 09 to uh, November 13 to replace uh, Letitia Ferguson, who resigned. I um, have a motion to accept. So moved. Uh, second. Second. All right. uh, any discussion? Um, Is Mr. Garrell here? Yes. Sorry? There we are. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I don't know where to start. Uh, me and Stanley have been friends. We've been partners in our law practice. Uh, Stanley retired um, about a year ago. I'm glad he's getting back into town service. This is a guy who has served this town in more capacities than almost anybody I know from being on the Board of Education, seeing his name on numerous plaques around uh, many of our schools from being on those building committees. Um, and he just served in various capacities. There's no one know, uh, to me who knows the town as much as Stanley Garrell, and I'm glad he's willing to come back and get involved again. So, Stanley, thanks. Kristen? I uh, could not agree more with the gratitude piece, in particular to Mr. Garrell. Um, I also know him uh, through his lovely wife, who helped to bring me to this town, actually. So I am incredibly grateful um, that he is willing to come forward and serve in this capacity. And I know that the two other fellow LAC members here are going to love having you on the commission. So thank you very much. And I'll echo both those. At, at, uh, Mr. Garrell, thank you for, for your time. I, I certainly, uh, over the years, have timed it to know your wife considerably well from our time in real estate together and her time on the League of Women Voters uh, and a very active volunteer in town. So it, uh, I want to uh, thank you both for all your service, but this is uh, Mr. Garrell's Day in the Sun. Um, any other comments here? No. Any comments from the public? Charlotte, you don't have anything to say? Absolutely not. <laughs> Except Jim. Jim, I'm a board educated person. He the other stuff. Oh, I thought he was on the board for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we um, back to the board. Um, and the, uh, are we ready to vote? Yes. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Mr. Garrell, congratulations and thank you. All right. Uh, next up, Penfield Reef Lighthouse Preservation Commission. Uh, Michelle Madugo, uh, Democrat, 455 Primrose Lane. May I have a motion to accept? So moved. A second. Second. Uh, any discussion? I am thrilled that <coughs> Michelle is willing to step forward. She is the kind of person who gets things done and works really well with other others to make things happen. So I think her insight and experience will be great for the Lighthouse Committee, so thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Mr. Walsh, anything to add? No, I'm just glad you're willing to serve. Um, <coughs> this committee's come up in the last 30 days before us, and there's uh, a lot more work to be done, so um, I, I really appreciate your time that you'll be willing to spend on this. Thank you. And and I've worked with Michelle at, at uh, many of the school committees. I've seen her on various tours throughout and, and mm -hmm. uh, have seen her handiwork uh, in volunteering for the town, and I think, again, uh, looking for a statement about what makes Fairfield special is people like Michelle stepping up, spending time, uh, looking for things <coughs> that interest them, but also looking for a way to help the town at the same time. And this is a little bit different than the venue I'm used to seeing you in, but I'm thrilled that uh, you would step up and volunteer here. Any comments from the public? Seeing none, back at the board. Are we ready to vote? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Michelle, congratulations and thank you. Um, I would mention with uh, everybody who has been appointed uh, today, please check with my office about getting sworn in appropriately so that, uh, I'm not sure if that's needed on the Fairfield Housing Authority, but on the, the other boards, I'm, uh, it is. Um, 
and uh, for those of you that need to get before the RTM, uh, also please check with my office about uh, the dates for that so we can make sure we confirm you on the agenda for, for the RTM. Uh, next up, uh, the Fairfield Bicycle and Pedestrian Plan, Pedestrian Plan Advisory Committee charge. Uh, the motion is to approve a charge to the Fairfield Bicycle and Pedestrian Plan Advisory Commission. Uh, you have that in your packet. And, uh, and apparently, just to, by way of background, as I understand it, uh, this committee was set up a while back to uh, work with the Greater Bridgeport uh, Regional Planning Authority on a bike and pedestrian plan for the town of Fairfield. Uh, I sat in on one of the workshops they had, uh, and it was um, quite an experience, great, great education, a great way of getting people involved in the process. Um, there was never a formal charge, as I understand it, beyond that. So part of what we're trying to do today, um, if it's agreeable with this board, is take a look at this charge uh, and see if that's um, acceptable to our board for, for them moving forward. I realize this is the really the first time we're looking at this, so. Uh, if um, it gets too involved, perhaps we can extend this over a couple of the meetings. If it's straightforward enough, perhaps we can look at it here. So uh, with that as a lead-in, any further, uh, did we do a motion, motion to accept? Uh, second? Second. All right. And with that, any discussion? I, just one, one piece and further uh, conversation. And I would like to give credit, actually, to Kathleen Griffin from the First Selectman's Office. She and I have been uh, working together and trying to basically reflect what has been done already. Um, others, the folks from who had served on the study uh, plan group also provided a lot, most of the language and helped to shape that so that it re accurately reflects the work and what needs to still be completed. In talking or hearing from Kathleen today, um, it's my understanding that um, having alternates is not necessarily um, the best plan, so that may be one change rather than having um, seven voting members and two alternates. But I, I would suggest that we change that to um, either seven voting members, period, or nine voting members rather than having the alternate positions. I'm not making a motion, but just putting that out for discussion at this point. Uh, yeah, just by way of discussion, I think that the two alternates is, is kind of an interesting form concept, just because it, it, if the issue is to get a quorum, with seven members you need four, with nine you need five, but with seven members and two alternates, you have a better shot of getting four there, because you basically have a pool of nine without changing the quorum number from four. Uh, so I really think that, that um, it's worthy of consideration um, given um, the schedules and in and, um, and today's life and society that we have but um, for your consideration well through you I may ask Miss Griffin since if she has anything to add to that to what I just heard in terms of information that yeah. would be helpful Kathleen any thoughts no, I think you should just do what you think is best for the committee. I mean, the town, like I said, assistant town attorney or former sister town attorney sort of said that alternates were typically put on only those committees where you have um, land issues and people need to be excused from the committee for conflict of interest reasons. So that's how she explained it to me typically. But in this instance, if it certainly makes sense for the committee in terms of getting a quorum and that works, then I think, you know, considering it for that reason is a totally different reason. And should do it. Yeah, I guess. Like it um, and and that explanation certainly makes sense. I mean, that would be a valid reason for, for that. I guess the uh, simply I, I, looking at some of the boards and commissions that we have, um, and specifically one that met last night, where two members showed up, so they were didn't have a quorum, so they're unable to conduct business. I guess that's what I'm kind of sensitive to in terms of which is not a um, not that, that I think that mm. what you described might be, a, in fact, is a, certainly a very important reason and consideration. I think they're just others. I think today in lifestyles where we're asking for volunteers, a lot of people in our town work in New York, work in Stanford, work in places that's not in town. It's not easy to get back here all the time. Uh, to alternates, just um, 
would seem to help accommodate that, but I don't mean to, uh, I just, I'd offer that out for, for consideration, I guess. Would the alternates be voting if one of the other members is not, because it doesn't say that here. It doesn't say that the alternates, because it says, the way it's written says seven voting members and two alternates. Um, the way it works for some of the other um, land use committees is the alternates get to vote if somebody is either not there, but they would choose who, you know, randomly choose who the um, the alternate is, and that person does become a voting member of that. I think that's the intent of what's said here. We need to clear this up to make that. Uh, yeah, I, I think we'd have to put something. And otherwise, there's no reason for the alternate to go there except just to sit there. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and so. You basically, I think the intent is here, much like, and let's pick the Conservation Commission. Yes. If somebody doesn't show up, an alternate's right. picked to be a full voting member sure. for that yes. evening session. Mm -hmm. um, I think it should more say How would you seven like regular meet, regular members. Okay. How about full members? Full members and two alternate members. Okay. Uh, and uh, maybe we should add a sentence in there, um, basically saying that if a full member is not present or recuses himself or herself from a matter, one of the alternates can fill in and, and become a full voting member for that matter. How about alternate members to fill in for a full member at the uh, request of the chair? Sure. Okay. Yeah. But I would take the word voting and, like you said, yeah. put the word full, exchange the word full. Kathleen, did you get all that? CD's running, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> General, yes. So uh, what's before us, Mr. Walsh, if I may state what sure. you said in a motion, is to replace the word voting with full yes. in the second, in the first sentence of the second paragraph, and then to add a sentence in after the first sentence, uh, alternate member to fill in for the regular, uh, alternate member to fill in for the full member at the request of the chair. Yes. Uh, let me say, just to be clear, for a missing full member. Well, I don't know if you say chair. missing because the person yeah. could yeah. be there but recuse themselves because it covers uh, a piece yeah. of property okay. that they have a conflict yeah. with. Then we'll leave it. Okay. I'll leave it. Sorry. All right. If, if that wording's okay, can I have a, you know, I'm going to assume that's your motion. motion. Yes. I'll second it. Uh, so the amendment, the wording amendments before us, any discussion? No. We're ready. Any uh, any comments from the public on the change in wording? And the change in wording only, please. All right, back to the board. Are we ready to vote? Any further discussion? Yes. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 So that wording is changed. Um, I would point out that the committee charge will expire on December 31, 2013. This is one of the things that uh, had been discussed, I think, at this board, but it, the idea of, of in essence, putting a sunset provision in the commissions, if we're not going to have, it's not going to be a standing commission, we're not going to have term limits, if you will. That sets a term limit on the entire commission, gives us a chance Maybe. to go back and review the charge, review the membership, see how it's working, and make any adjustments at that point if we need to. Uh, any further discussion? Just another comment about the uh, expiration date, which, it, as I said before, the, the, there are a lot of work has been done. Um, already to this point, so there's a bit left to do, and this seemed like a reasonable amount of time in which to be able, more than reasonable, hopefully this will be moved forward prior to this point. So, um, and this is a committee, I know that there are folks who have interest in a longer term um, commission or something more permanent, um, but my thought was let's look at the committee itself at this point and then that's just my opinion. So I think that December 13 should be more than adequate time. And, and I agree with what you said. I also like the structure of the concept of something coming back to this board for tweaking. Uh, we've had several uh, considerations come before this board where we talked about changing the charge or changing the mission or adjusting the members or uh, I think this lets that happen. It's not like a school building project where you know it's done when the school's built. Uh, this kind of uh, allows us to make those adjustments uh, as we go. Uh, okay to go to the public or any further discussion at this time? Just in regards to the timing and, and 
Is there a sense of timing on when this was going to be completed? You said you thought it was reasonable. I have no information to know whether it's reasonable or not. I would. I, mean, yeah. I, I don't know what's involved <laughs> in it, so well, it's a year uh, and a half, basically. Well, it's been so the, initially the group was um, put in place in April 2010, um, or in the spring of 2010. And so far, a lot of the things that are in the charge have been accomplished. Um, at this point, there is a draft plan that is almost uh, almost ready to go and the the group at the uh, time was trying to work together they were having trouble getting quorums because people had stepped off it wasn't clear necessarily who was voting non-voting etc and at this point and I'd love to let them those who have been involved actually can speak more about this so maybe I'll just um, let that go and we can ask those who have been more directly involved but the, the question now is what, what's the final document going forward and what are some of the implementation steps if you look back at these, the task list, this draft outline. Um, so there, there are a few different pieces on here and what are the short term, long term, et cetera. So, and how, how does that go before the town bodies, which bodies it goes before? That's part of what the committee still needs to do. But I, I'm going to stop because I do think if it, if during public comment uh, perhaps oh, some of can, the members could can go there now if it's okay with sure. my colleagues. Uh, is there somebody who'd like to speak on behalf of the uh, Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee? Right. Sir, yeah. Just introduce yourself to the folks in TV land sure. uh, and state your name and address please. Uh, Andrew Graceffo from 165 York Road in um, I have been involved uh, with the previous iteration of the Bike Walk Advisory Committee uh, for approximately six months. Um, the state of the plan thus far is that, again, like Kristen like, uh, said, we have a draft plan. It's been actually, this is probably a third draft version of it is currently standing. Um, the reason for this reform, reforming of the committee is to step back, actually have a formal charge for the committee have, a, have an actual a vote, the voting structure clarified. And um, and then once the, com the new committee is formed and the new members are appointed, uh, you know, with the expectation that they will be appointed to uh, revisit the plan, not for a complete rewrite, but actually to have it, um, the members analyze it, take another look at it, suggest any revisions that we may have, and then go through the pro formal process of recommendation uh, to the Board of Selectmen into the other various uh, bodies as necessary. So that is, that's my statement. Thank you. Any thank questions you. from the board? Yeah. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. thank you. Any other comments from the public at this time? All right, back to the board. Any further discussion? No, I mean, I more than anything just um, would like to see this move forward just because they, there was a lot of work that was done as the first selectman as you referred to there was a very large forum that was held to gather public input the greater bridgeport regional now council um, has done a lot a lot with those previous members and there's some really wonderful um, things that can be done that are not costly that are <laughs> helpful to the community will make it safer for bikers and walkers and then there's you know looking at the long term so I think it'd be great to get them going and uh, get folks meeting again okay. the, um, the one other thought I'd have for any of the committee members that are here and, and I don't think it's necessarily uh, something you need to put in the charge but I know in my talks with the folks at Fearful You and Sacred Heart they're very interested in this initiative uh, they have their own plans in terms of and thoughts and, and how to move their students about town and they're trying to create a closer bond with the town. So I would strongly encourage you to, to meet with the representatives of the universities and make sure that whatever you're doing you either plan it with them or allow for what they're doing to happen. And if you can't coordinate it tighter than that, but at least allow for it. Uh, I know it, uh, just specifically in talking with the folks at Fearful U, they were talking about how to get their students, you know, on bike or foot to the center of town and you're looking at that and saying hold it we've got three schools along that same path we're trying to get 
our kids to school, you're trying to get your students into town and back, there seems to be a, a, a lot of overlap, literally, in, in terms of the path. So it might not change everything we're doing, but it might affect the priorities in terms of what we do first. So just for, for your consideration. Uh, any further discussion before we vote? All right. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 And the charge as amended, I should add, as amended. Um, <coughs> the, Kathleen, you have those amendments in place? Or you will, surely? I've got them written here if you need it. Okay. All right. All right. So that goes here. Uh, next up, item 10 on our agenda are appointments to the Fairfield Bicycle and Pedestrian Plan Advisory Committee. Uh, Meg Capadano, uh, okay to take these together. Would you like to take them individually? Together is fine. Together is fine. Okay. Uh, Andrew uh, Graceffa, John Franzen, and Alyssa Israel. Uh, are, is everybody here? Great. Thank you. Uh, may I have a motion to accept? Move. A second. second. Thank you. Any discussion? I just want to thank everyone for stepping forward to serve, and and I know some of you, and have, uh, in fact, know most of you, and Mr. Franz, and look forward to working with you as I plan to get back involved in this effort. Um, I I think, Meg, it was you who said I know these roads, and I know you know these roads because I see you out running and biking <laughs> as I'm out there running and biking. But I think that the unique mix of experience that you each have, um, literally on the road or in public health, in architecture, engineering, your perspectives are really valuable. And um, just encourage you to connect. I think the university suggestion was great, but also the more we can outreach to the community and understand the community needs. I mean, I'm sure you heard about the bike um, vehicle incident on Church Hill and Stonely Roads recently, so we need to do a lot to educate cyclists and pedestrians as well um, and the community at large, so I appreciate your being willing to take the lead on these efforts. All right. Any further comments from the board? No, I'd just like to thank everyone for, for serving. Um, I know a few of you, I know Jack probably the best, and I appreciate you staying involved in this project. So um, so I just wish you Godspeed with it, and good luck. Yeah. I think that, you know, when you look at this, it, it uh, as you get out, as the three of us have, and talk to residents in our community, uh, there's a consistent message after taxes <laughs> <laughs> to uh, address the issues of traffic and parking. And it seems to me the fastest way to do that is to make sure that people aren't using cars. So anything you do to eliminate that is, is a big help uh, to our community. And I want to thank you for uh, agreeing to be involved and, and helping us in that effort. Any comments from the public? Seeing none, back to the no, board. There's one. Oh, Alyssa. <laughs> Alyssa? <laughs> oh, need some pedestrian access there. <laughs> a little pedestrian access needed. <laughs> no, no liability. <laughs> Hello, Alyssa Israel, 679 Roland Road. I just had a, a quick question for you. Um, you did approve the alternates, which is great, but um, how do we get those two alternates? We only have seven on the list so far. Uh, they would be appointed through this board, so we'd accept nominations or uh, so we need to we'll look. use our, our resources. We'd be happy to accept uh, suggestions from your group. Well, you mentioned the universities, and we, we do have um, Ophelia Roe Allen on the list from Fairfield University, and we will look for somebody from Sacred Heart as well. If you know anyone who had Sacred Heart, that would be great. Well, I think that was just a request to all the residents in town. If you know anybody okay. from the university who would like <laughs> to be involved. So it, it's up to us, essentially, to try to find the other two. Yep. And, well, and Kristen will help And us. simply anybody who is, it, is interested in being involved, just comment. Uh, contact the First Selectman's office and, and we will keep going. Uh, help things through. And okay, we're ready to get started meeting again, even with that, or do we need to get those two appointed before no, you we? Can, you can get started uh, right away. Right away, great. Thanks. All right. Yes. Thank you. No, I, I'll wait. And, are you? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else in the public? All right, back to the board. Just a follow up comment. Um, Though this is not a charter committee, so it doesn't by charter necessarily require party balance, we were trying to kind of maintain the spirit of the charter in that. So I think that um, at this point, 
we particularly would, um, I personally, I would speak for myself, I'm not for my fellow board members, be interested in those who are unaffiliated and Republican voters um, who are willing to serve. So just, that's just my two cents about that. All right. Any further comments? No. Are we ready to vote? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Congratulations and thank you. Can I have a photo of the four of them together? Sure. If they're willing, Meg, I can't make them do that. <laughs> if they're willing, Meg, I can't make them do that. And may I have one of those? Uh, go right ahead. We have. I, I think this I is a great also, time. I think this is a good time to say that I believe Friday is a uh, bike to work day. Yes. It's bike to work week. Bike to work, oh, week. work week. There we go. So. I think I've missed the first three days. <laughs> we got a lot of biking to do. We've got to go buy a bike. <laughs> That's a story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we'll yeah. And I think there's an event actually at Chef's Table Friday morning for local bicyclists who want a bike to work. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Right? Chef table event uh, from seven to nine tomorrow morning. Anybody who arrives on bike Friday, or, bike, or Friday, 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 Friday. Yeah. Friday uh, free food and uh, just everyone to mingle for a little bit. All just right. To, to hang out. You said seven thirty to nine. Seven to nine. Seven to nine. Yes. Okay. Yes. Very good. So Thank you very much. Thank you Thank and enjoy you. breakfast. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, from the director of public <coughs> works. <coughs> A discussion on photo, photovoltaic proposal, fuel cells, and methane gas generator. Mr. Bowman, do you have uh, yeah. some discussion <laughs> for us? Yes, sir. I should point out that, that nobody uh, has done more for energy conservation and green energy uh, and sustainability in the town uh, than Ed Bowman over the years, and he personally has spearheaded the town's efforts there and does, has done a great job. Thank you. You should wear a green shirt, though, Ed. Blue. I know. <laughs> I have a lot of green, too. Uh, Ed Bowman, Assistant Director of Public Works. Uh, basically, uh, we're here to, to this, the 2012 Energy, uh, the 2011 Energy Act actually came up with a, a series of programs for the state to start addressing three of its most critical electrical supply and delivery needs, which no, most of them, importantly, is reliability. Uh, within its power grid. It initiated a program to finance these programs using renewable energy credits. And uh, the program has the following characteristics, really. It's beginning in this year, and for the next six years, the UI and Northeast will solicit long-term 15-year contracts for these wrecks. Okay, one wreck is defined as the amount of electricity produced each year but in megawatt hours. So 1,000 kilowatts equals one megawatt equals one wreck. Private companies or public agencies will bid on in a reverse auction the dollar value per rec. Okay, and the ones with the lowest price will be awarded a rec contract. The amount of the rec will then be fixed for 15 years. These recs will be paid for by UI and Northeast Utilities and then be assessed on our electric bill going forward as part, you know, part of the bill. So there's not really any state money involved in it per, per se. The winners then have one year to build and uh, commence operations. The total value of the REC program over six years is about $1 billion is going to be spent on this. Unfortunately, the, the implementation of the first year of the program is extremely short. Uh, it wasn't until the end of April that the Public Utility, PURA, Public Utility Research Authority, approved the RFP. So May 1st, the RFPs were issued. By June 12th, the RFPs are due. By July 17th, all the, the winners are going to be announced. By August 7th, contracts have to be signed. Now, but we've been meeting with people over the last six months knowing this program was coming and with uh, to discuss fuel cells, photovoltaic, and methane generation projects, which are the ones that are most likely to succeed in the town of Fairfield. Uh, so we've been anticipating them and been talking to a number of contractors. The two ones that have to seem to be the, the most ability to succeed in the near future are, is a major PV installation on top of the closed landfill down at uh, behind the public works garage. That would create a, a large photovoltaic solar installation that we would provide about 90% of the power for Oldfield School, the annex, all the public works building, the transfer station, and about uh, half of the sewage treatment plant with one big uh, installation. 
The second one is the methane co-generator at the, at the water pollution control facility, where a byproduct of the treatment down there is methane, which now is just being wasted into the air. You can take that methane and build a, a generator similar to the one at the police station, but twice that size, which will also not only provide electricity, but will also provide heating and air conditioning for the buildings. So those are projects we're looking at. Uh, and this is done through what's uh, known as a power purchase agreement, which is the preferred way under this act and under the program for municipalities or private organizations to uh, buy into this program. And what happens is that the private entity then basically stru uh, structures, designs, finances, builds, owns, and operates the whole facility for 20 years. Uh, that if we bought in, we would have the opportunity to either extend the contract at the end of the 20 years, uh, review the contract, change it, or buy it ourselves or tell them to get off the site and take their property. The private entity receives also a federal tax credit, investment tax credit of 30 percent, if it does it this year, as well as accelerated depreciation. And then they would bid in and own their recs besides. What the private entity is doing will sell electricity at agreed upon price, escalating for 20 years to the town. Uh, which would always be less than the option of bidding every two or three years to buy our power the way we're doing now. Okay. Secondly, the, we, we're trying to get them to, to measure that price against the current town price for electricity in the buildings that they would supply. And saying, is if that, that price would not go up or down for 20 years, it would stay the same for 20 years, which is a very conservative proposal. I mean, uh, all the things I read believe that over 20 years that's good, that price is going to go up you know, considerably. Some people say it may go down. But if we say it stays the same, that's a very conservative proposal. And that's what they would be doing is measuring their proposals to provide us power at a rate that is less than we're paying now for 20 years. Okay. That would give us a long-term stability for electrical costs, a reliable source of power, and increase our, ground, our green power supply. If the technology fails, the worst case is or our company goes bankrupt or goes out of the energy business, where there's no financial obligation whatsoever on the town's part to do anything. We just then would go back to UI or bid it out again with someone else. I mean, so it's really a win-win-win type of thing. In the end, the program offers the town the opportunity to use proven technology that experienced companies that save taxpayers money for 20 years, increase the use of green power, and reduce both criteria pollutants under the old Clean Air Act when Connecticut's one of the five worst states in the country for that, as well as reduce greenhouse gas emissions into our air at the same time improve public health from the uh, result of redu reducing these emissions. So it seems like a program that really we should be pursuing very quickly. And what happens now is we're, we're at looking for permission to continue talking to these companies and to have the first electman authorized to sign a memorandum of understanding, which would just permit them to submit a bid on our behalf we would tell them they could use that piece of property at the top of the landfill or a piece of property at the treatment plant or wherever it would be. Uh, and then if they're a successful bidder, then a contract would be developed. If they're not successful, it just it's the end of the program. So there's really no commitment to anything except to develop the program and submit a proposal, which the ones we looked at, I would say, we're talking about saving at the very minimum a uh, million and a half dollars over 20 years for these things. So they're very, very significant savings involved in this. That's my presentation. All right, thank you. Any questions from the board? All right, Ed, if you just uh, step through the, the, the timing here, you said something about yeah. a mid-June date where uh, by, the state would be Yeah, by June, these, or? June 12th, the request for proposals have to be submitted to UI or Northeast Utilities and Upstate, which means between now and then, we'd have to pick a company or two companies or three companies to sign a memorandum of understanding to provide this kind of a power and to go forward with it. The one at the sewage treatment plant, we intend to do ourselves, uh, similar to the way we did it at the police station. So the sewer commission would approve that and we'd go forward with that as ourselves on, on our own. We don't need to have a private company. All right. So would you be looking to come back before this board with some proposal the first uh, meeting? Next meeting, yeah. Yeah, okay. So that'd be that first week in June. I think it's June 6th, maybe, roughly? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I think it may be before that. I mean, that's uh, well, right. June 6th gets plenty of time, right? Yeah. yeah. So that, that would be fairly quick turnaround from there to yes, June 12th. So yeah. um, I think that's, it was, 
uh, I appreciate you giving us a heads up now as opposed to coming at the 11th hour. It has, has happened from time to well, time, so thank you very when much. When they approved the schedule, we realized it already was the 11th hour. You know? <laughs> they had a whole year to do this, and all of a sudden, bang, you know, they just did it. So. Well, we're not familiar with operating that way in Fairfield. No, certainly. of course not. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any government by crisis. All right. um, any other Kristen? Question, um, similar to my question the last time we had a conversation about efforts, the, the methane gas, uh, capturing the methane gas, which is at the wastewater treatment, mm -hmm. that's something that you're talking about doing internally without an, another company? No, we would do that with another company, but okay. we would we ask the, the sewer commission to finance it themselves for their own bonds, and so we'd back to the RTM for that. because it. It doesn't, it's a technology we can understand. We'll get a 20 year maintenance agreement with. I mean, fuel cells, uh, power, or, uh, photovoltaic, uh, those kind of technologies are, are way beyond our understanding, really. And we want the third party to have all that responsibility if it fails, whatever. This is really just a diesel generator burning methane. We can understand that and work with that. But we want a company that will have a 20 year maintenance agreement that will guarantee it will run for 20 years at 90% of capacity, or they'll pay for all the cost of replacement or whatever. So that's what we've been doing. But it's, there's no reason to pay a private company a premium to finance that. We believe that the town could take that risk very, very easily. Okay. Well, that was, so that actually answered another question. But my actual question is, there are two different, or a few different projects, but specifically you talked about the capturing the methane gas yeah. and the photovo photovoltaic yes. installation. Can it be a both end, or is it an either or situation? No, it would like be, this? we're going to, uh, we probably will wind up submitting two uh, uh, photovoltaic proposals and, and one methane. So maybe probably three proposals will be out there. Okay. If we had six, we'd submit six, but I think we'll have three at this point. So, and, uh, and it's just, uh, it just depends how many people submit and who has the lowest price. So. so the three the three that you're looking at are, are the three that seem viable and doable, and there aren't? The most you viable. wish we had more, but it's Well, I think we might have more, but I don't think they can be done in a short period of time. Some of them require much longer lead time, you know, and we didn't have that lead time, but they'll be back next year. <laughs> yeah, because there was a 12-month cycle or something that'll be yes. coming back. So, in essence, for next year, we have a 12-month lead time. Right. Now, however, if, if they don't get enough proposals this year, they'll do it again this year. Okay. So, you may have a three- or four-month lead time. At least that's reasonable. So, see, the reason there's two photovoltaic proposals may be that there's a maximum you can submit. One megawatt is the largest. We have 1.6 megawatts, so we'll split it in two pieces, that's all. Any further questions? There, are, there is one other. There is, there is a small program that may come out in another couple of months. We'd, we'd be looking for a few of those. Too, so. well, I, I just want to comment. I, this is very exciting to me. I mean, I think. Mr. Bowman, you are to be commended as the first selection said. You, it's amazing, but, but it's the. I heard a, a recent report on the radio about kind of using everything on the farm and not having waste and being able to use the methane gas that's just literally being <coughs> wasted right. at this point. That's I am really happy about this, all of it. So it's great. Thank you. Plus, it's free fuel. <laughs> that's right. Ed, oh, oh, ask one question. I see that you're putting it at the top of the landfill. That's one of the proposed locations. Are you still looking at putting some type of wind harnessing? We're still, that, that study is still underway. The, the SODAR, which is the unit that measures the wind, which is also creating that beeping that's disturbing people, yeah. uh, that'll be gone in, by June, though. That broke down in the middle of it, otherwise it would have been done. Uh, we, would never, we were never looking at putting that on top of the landfill. Okay. It, it, if you did it, it could be 200 feet high, and you'd, then it'd be on top of sure. another. Yeah. You'd be seeing it from uh, Missouri, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so we don't want to do that either. <laughs> Fairfield, tallest place in Connecticut. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll be the World Trade Center. will be mm -hmm. equal, you know. So that still is underway, though. Yeah. Still underway. Okay, great. Anything else, Mr. Bowman? Thank you very much. Thank and you. again, thank, thank you. you for your leadership in this very important effort. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, next up, <coughs> banner requests. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a discussion item. <coughs> Let me get to. Banner issue. Uh, and let me set up this discussion with this by way of explanation. Uh, this came into uh, our, my office, First Lieutenant's office, uh, at the 11th hour. Uh, they needed a decision very quickly on this. 
in reviewing this, this seems sim it, this is definitely not meet our qualifications, at least as I perceive them right off. Uh, but it seems similar to the exceptions that we've made in the past. So my thought was to go ahead and approve this uh, as a one-time exception, but then bring it back to the board to see if this was the type of thing that, that uh, would fit it is a reasonable exception or we should uh, make sure anything like this comes back to the board in the future ahead of time. So I'm um, uh, opening that up. The key uh, items uh, as we looked at this were looking for the, uh, here we are, uh, something about uh, the number of Fairfield families that are, are involved in this parish or church and um, I'm looking on here. I thought it was like 170 families. 107 families. Uh, there we are. Total number. Uh, lower right-hand corner. 107 uh, families or Fairfield families are members of Holy Trinity. So that was a thought, but I just wanted to run it by the board to get your guidance in the future on how to address things like this. This event's not going to be in Fairfield. Uh, no, it's not. And the two, uh, the two analogous exceptions I was looking to were uh, the Fairfield uh, Children's Choir, Fairfield County Children's Choir. That was mm -hmm. uh, an event outside of Fairfield, and the um, was it the Chowder Fest. Mm -hmm. Was that the chili or ch chowder thing that was done down in Westport? But uh, and it seemed based on the discussion at this board, because both involved a significant number of Fairfield residents, um, that might be an issue. The other uh, question we asked was, is there any available banner space? We didn't want to kick anybody off or chew up banner space at Sherman Green. There seemed to be plenty of banner space at the time. But um, uh, just looking for guidance going forward uh, as to the wishes of this board. Just okay. comment that no, this isn't Fairfield, but it literally is directly across the street, not far from my neck of the woods. And I know certainly many people from that part of town who not only attend the church but also participate in that event. Um, so I'm open to this. I, I don't object. I think it is it's similar to what we did before, but don't have uh, strong you know feelings I'm open to discussion if there's if there are objections well, it was just the 11th hour request sure. this it's the first in. time that they've sought this <coughs> um, to my knowledge yes <coughs> and it, does it say that it yes. should pass that on the questionnaire though <coughs> and question five it just asks whether they've had anything this year Ah, true. <clears throat> well, I mean, it's already done. Um, I don't have a, like I said, I don't have a problem with it. Just, well, that's uh, this, but I'm looking for guidance going forward. Yeah. Is this um, happy and, and literally, without <clears throat> bias, if, if the board wishes that we bring anything that doesn't absolutely meet the qualifications back forward, we'll do that. And if somebody doesn't get it to us in time, we'll just say tough. If, if it's close enough like this and uh, I'm more than happy to bring these to the board after the fact and make sure I get guidance and make sure you, the board is aware of what we're doing. Okay. Um, are they a 501c3? Or uh, is your organization a nonprofit? They said yes. Yes. Okay. I don't have a problem. Right. Just, but, uh, and just it kind of surprised me after coming up with a policy. It seems every other month we're still having to hear more of these. I thought we were going to hear less, and it seems as though we're almost hearing the same number as we previously heard. Well, <laughs> just by having. <laughs> I think that to some degree we're we're certainly not approving every banner going up. So yeah, that that's true. Less. Um, 
there are exceptions, but I think to some degree that was the, the benefit of the policy, which is mm -hmm. to define it, I think, um, and thank you again for your work on that, mm -hmm. for 80 percent of the cases and the other 20 percent we'll kind of deal with. Um, and we're still in the first year of the policy, sure. so yeah. we're still That's learning right. from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, but so with uh, two things, one, because this is an exception, happy to take feedback sure. offline if we need to, um, but we'll move on from there. Uh, did we have any tax collector refunds? I okay. didn't see any. Okay, good. No. Uh, next up, to hear and consider and act upon any communications. There's none before us. Uh, to hear, consider, and act upon any other business that should properly come before this meeting. Uh, there's none before us. Uh, next up, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks.